on the Texas A&M Sports Network. From Learfield, live from Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue on Harvey Road in College Station. Welcome to the Aggie Soccer Hour with Coach G. Brought to you by Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. Visit Rudy's.com to find real Texas barbecue near you. St. Joseph Health, your primary partner for primary care and the official health care provider of Texas A&M Athletics. And by The Pool Guy, a proud partner of Texas A&M Athletics. Now, the Aggie Soccer Hour with Coach G. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Aggie Soccer Hour with Coach G. We're coming to you live from Rudy's Barbecue on Harvey Road. I'm David Ellis, and alongside is Texas A&M head coach G. Guerreri. And uh, G, th- you know this is my favorite time of the year. We, we're getting ready to get this thing cranked up here in about, what, 49 hours, something like that? That's a that's a that's a lot more hours than I can count, but I know it's close. It's uh it's exciting. Today was a uh, the the players are excited. It's um you know it was really ramped up today as far as the enthusiasm on on the uh, training field, and I know that it's um it's getting there because uh, you can kind of feel it in the air as 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 we get closer and closer. You know we've played two exhibition games now. And really, we've had some really nice crowds for the exhibition games. Yes, uh, we both have. For the SMU game and the Texas State game. But uh, we got some big dogs coming to town this weekend with Florida State and Washington State. And uh, should be uh, should be a lot of fun. Florida State, of course, uh, Thursday night at uh, 7 p.m. And Washington t- uh, State at 6 p.m. on Sunday night. Uh, Want to remind you, uh, of course, this radio show and the game broadcast you can always get on uh, 97.3 fm your 12th man mobile app your radio aggieland app and tonight if you want to uh, i don't know why you exactly want to do this but well i do i'll explain that in a minute you can uh, go to the aggie soccer facebook page and you can get the video stream of this program and in the second segment we're going to have a lot better people to look at than than you and i clearly uh, we're going to move out of the way basically yes exactly because we're going to have a uh, uh, Kenna Caldwell and uh, Lauren Gessick, who will be on. Uh, the two captains for Texas A&M soccer, they'll be on the first program uh, this evening. So uh, you, you'll, they'll be on, like I say, in, in, uh, starting about 6.15, 6.16, somewhere along in there. But uh, I wanted to talk a little bit. You know, you, you, you started out with uh, a match against SMU, defeated them by the score of 2 to nothing, and then played Texas State. Uh, and defeated them four to nothing. And the thing that was constant, at least to me, just as a fan, just watching, I was so impressed with the fitness of this team. I mean, and it particularly showed up, oh, maybe in that around the 70 minute mark, you know, somewhere about that long into the pitch. You could see how physically fit this team was. Well, uh, yeah, and that's it's interesting you say that because that was that was one of the uh, that was one of the, the things that we challenged the players with. I think Ashley Jackson, who's our strength and conditioning coach, who is a former college soccer player herself, um, that was one of the charges that we that we set out with going into into the summer was, you know, that we wanted the team to be more fit. That we we know we know what the weather is going to be like come August. Uh, we know what our climate is like and. You know, and sometimes, you know, we can we can go into a season. We know the kind of competition that we're going to be playing against. We knew what the schedule was going to be coming out of the spring, going into this into this fall, and fitness was going to be a big a big part of of how our success is going to be. And there was a there was a couple of games, you know, last fall that, you know, we didn't lose, but you know, did did we have the ability to to kind of step on someone's throat at the end of? The, and I don't I don't mean that. Literally, L- literally right, right. but figuratively to go after the kill. And and sometimes, you know, we, we questioned if we did. So we wanted to see if we could take it to the next level. And I was talking to the SMU coach this past weekend. Um, we played them two weeks two weekends ago. Right. And she made the same comment about just how much more fit we were than they were. And especially in the, in the last 20, 25 minutes of the match that, that they just couldn't keep up with us. And it really – and the other thing that showed up, at least for me – was the difference between this team uh, and last year's team in terms of the maturity level uh, of the players 
Well, on they are the more team. mature. Exactly. And it, but it shows up on the field, mm-hmm. I think, mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Uh, in terms of, in terms of the, the, the leadership, in terms of sort of the, all right, you know, we're not going to panic. We're not going to, you know, we're just going to stay, stay on task. And as you say, keep, keep putting it on. Well, one of, the, one of the issues that we've had the last couple seasons is, and this goes, this goes to just kind of the, the nuances of what's been going on in college sports the last two years. So since the COVID year of 2020, so in the 2021 season and in the 2022 season, you've had players who had an extra year of eligibility. Well, now we really haven't had that so much. We haven't had the fifth year player like a lot of other teams had. So i uh, give you an example. Last year, LSU, we played on, on their senior day. They had 14 seniors. Right. Uh, we only had 24 players on our whole team. They had 14 seniors right. on, their, on their team. Uh, the year before that, Arkansas had like 12 seniors on their team. Um, so their, te- th- their team had been senior dominated. And then they had a – then all of a sudden they got this bonus year because they, the NCAA said COVID – the COVID year didn't count, so they were able to get their players to come back for another year. Well, when the COVID year hit for us, our seniors had the option. They were they were in demand to go play professionally, and so they took that opportunity and went and played professionally. They didn't stick around for the fifth year, and they, they graduated, and they went on, and they played professionally. Or um, Macy Kolb went into vet school, and she went on and did, did her thing that way. So we didn't really have the – we didn't – get the opportunity to take advantage of having all those fifth year players. So all of our players were 18 years old and 19 years old as we brought in these new freshmen playing against 22 year olds and sometimes 23 year olds. Well, so it's kind of coming out in the wash now where now those players who were really young and having to, you know, learn on the fly against these players who had already been seasoned and older, our, our opponents. Well, now our players are seasoned and a little bit older and they've, and so they've, they've gone through and they've learned. And they're, I mean, we got some really, some really, you're going to see when Lauren Gessick and, and Kenna are up here, we got some really smart players on this, on this, in this roster. And we got some really experienced players who have, have learned from sometimes some hard, some hard knocks about that they need to do this and they need to do this because this happened and this happened and this happened. And, and fitness was a part of it and understanding what, what, nuances are, are needed in their training regimen and a lot of it is when no one's watching the hard work that they were going to put in and that's really what they did that's what they did over the summer that's what they did over the spring and uh, we're hoping that the, the payoff is going to come this season and the next season and you've got uh, three new transfers in right in terms of Sammy Smith uh, from Boston Who's College a, a fifth year player right who, who was the captain for Boston College was an all ACC player um, great player. Great. She scored a, a really nice goal the other night against Texas State. Set up another goal. Had, had a goal and an assist against Texas State. Um, terrific personality. And, uh, you know, is, she's in the master's program here at A&M with the entrepreneurial uh, business in, uh, in the May School. And uh, Jasmine Wilkinson, transfer from Arizona State. All Pac-12 player. She has two years of eligibility left. But, again, someone who has Canadian national team experience with the under-20s, played in the, in the uh, U-20 World Cup. She scored a really nice goal in uh, transition against Texas State the other night. And then uh, Grace McClellan, certainly last but not least, all she's done is uh, won a national championship at the last school she, uh, she attended, uh-huh. right? And an All-American, and she's got two shutouts so far. So b- coming in, she and Ken have been splitting time um, in, in the two games. So uh, th- those, those three have, have stepped right in and, and fit right into the, uh, the culture of the team and, and the way that they fit in. And, and they've been really good, um, you know, in, you know in, in they have, they're not, you know, they're, they're – just kind of the leadership and the way that they go, they they set onto the field and the way that they handle themselves. You know, the younger players look up to them because they're they they they're seen as experienced, smart, mature players, and they're really nice people. Well, they are. I've had a chance to interview uh, all of the new players. Uh, as a matter of fact, on our on our podcast, if you haven't had a chance to listen to those yet, you can get an opportunity to know all of the incoming freshmen plus these uh, three new transfers. Uh, and all you have to go is to uh, 12thman.com 
uh, and then you'll see the podcast section, and you'll get a chance to – each of these podcasts last about 10 minutes each, and you'll be able to, to get to know these players a little bit about their background and, and why they came to Texas A&M. And so um, I, I encourage you uh, – to listen to those, and I promise you, I don't talk very much. It's mostly the players, and well, so and it's all, very Well, all of that is on Studio Twelve. If you if you uh, if you listen to podcasts, I do. I'm a walker, so you can go at any time. If you go onto any of the your where you find podcasts through, whether it's through you know iTunes or whether it's through Spotify or whatever, you can um, just go to Studio Twelve, which is Matt Simon and those guys. A lot of their shows and your show is uh, is on there and you can listen to, to any of them and it, that's all the freshmen and it's it really is it's uh it's it's pretty amazing what these what these young women are like yeah they are and you and i promise you you're going to enjoy it and you know, i wanted to talk about one other thing that i i uh, you, you guys have always done that you have done when you start to put the schedule together i mean you're not starting out against the sisters of the poor uh you, <laughs> you right out of the box you're going to face uh, Florida State, Ar- which is arguably one of the three most talented teams in America. Yes, and they will have all of their players back from the World Cup who have been playing uh, in the World Cup in uh, Australia and New Zealand. And then you f- follow that up with Washington State, uh, and who was just in their Final Four. Not, yeah, not just in the Final ago. Four. What three years ago now? Uh, yeah, but two and two and two, yeah, two, three years ago. I mean. Right off the bat, and, and, you know, a lot of people, a, a lot of coaches and coaching staffs would be afraid to do that kind of thing. They go, no, we, we want to we wanna build up some confidence and that sort of thing. And you guys go, no, bring it on. Well, we're, we're pretty confident in the team that we have. And, uh, you know, and I, I think that these are games that it's the first weekend of the season. It's a great opportunity for us to – to learn, uh, you know, these are the teams that we want to be playing at the end of the season, um, in the postseason. And, you know, Florida State is one of those teams. Both of these teams are Final Four teams. These are the teams that we want to be playing in the Final Four. We'd like to be there again. Um, you know, we've hosted the Final Four a few times. So let's, uh, let's test ourselves. And if we have the opportunity to play them here in front of the 12th man at Ellis Field, it's move-in weekend um, on campus. You know, we'd love to we'd love to see uh, a lot of those freshmen and, and kids that are moving on to campus. We'd love to see them get over to Ellis and as part of Howdy Week. And let's uh, you know, let's test ourselves. Let's see let's see what we can do. And uh, you know, and I wouldn't schedule these games if I didn't think that we had a we had a chance to uh, to step up and get a result. Although I do know that, like I said, these are these are uber talented teams, very well coached, and uh, it it is a big big challenge. But it's a challenge that. Uh, Again, I'm, I'm really looking forward to. Which gives me an opportunity to tell you, again, once again, that uh, game 7 o'clock on Thursday against Florida State and uh, Sunday at 6 o'clock against Washington State. Now, for uh, uh, we've got 12th Man Rewards is back. All you have to do is go to the go to download the 12th Man uh, mobile app if you haven't done that yet. It's free. Sign up and... I don't know how exactly this works. This is like technology stuff. But nonetheless, as soon as you walk into the gate, it registers that you're there on your phone. And you well, I get think you have to open the app. Okay. See, this? I told you I didn't understand this. So, uh, but you have to open the app, but it registers uh, where you are and uh, that you're there, and you start to accumulate points and get free stuff. Also, uh, from 6 to 6.30 on Friday night, 50% off of uh, drinks. So there you go. You I think can the whole concessions thing is, is that all right. Off, right? Is that the whole concession deal? All right, so hot dog, drinks, whatever, 50% off. You can hydrate and feed yourself there. So what a, what a deal. And then Sunday... Our normal uh, Sunday fun day, one adult uh, uh, general admission ticket will get four kids in free. Uh, I mean, you can't hardly beat that. Uh, So, uh, again, it is soccer season. It is the best time of the year. So it's the time to come out and uh, start. And this, I will tell you, after having seen seen them play two exhibition games and been out to a lot of practices, this team is going to be fun to watch. You're not going to want to miss this. Uh, It will be for sure. Now, coming up here in just a second, we're going to have Kenna Caldwell and Lauren Gessick. Gessick, they're going to join us up here. G and I will move to the edges of the table so we can put the girls on camera. People, much for whatever reason, would rather see them than us. I don't get it, but nonetheless, uh, uh, that's what we're going to do. 
And uh, they'll be here on the second segment. We'll talk about them, about, uh, talk to them about this uh, upcoming season. We're going to take a quick break. This is the Aggie Soccer Hour with Coach G coming to you live from Rudy's Barbecue on Harvey Road. On Harvey Road, it's the Aggie Soccer Hour with Texas A&M head coach G Guerrero. I am David Ellis, and this is our favorite part of the show. It is every year. Um, we have got uh, Lauren Gessick and Kenna Caldwell here, two captains on uh, this year's team. But one of the things we started a couple of years ago now is uh, get one of these players to do the Rudy's Barbecue Read, and uh, it, uh, that duty has been assigned uh, to Lauren Gessick. So, Lauren, okay, here's the deal. Do not mess this up, okay? <laughs> All right, so go. Soccer and barbecue lovers know that the perfect brisket needs the right wood. Rudy smokes all their meats using their delicious signature rubs in 100% oak-fired pits. Get your real Texas barbecue fix today at Rudy's or on the web at rudys.com. There you go. You nailed it. Come on now. <laughs> Boy, that, I mean, having a, being a off a year, that didn't hurt you a bit. I mean. So, David, uh, yes. Lauren is a pre-med 4.0 yeah, uh, exactly. she's not going to struggle too much with a read <laughs> on barbecue i knew that but i was trying she's to get like 11 <laughs> syllable words that she's doing every day i was trying to make her as nervous as possible but it did good absolutely. luck with that yeah it just didn't work uh glad to have you here you are uh, both of you undoubtedly uh two of the real leaders on this team and i want to kind of start with you kenna you different from everybody else. You're the person back there in goal, and you have the whole field in front of you. Um, what, what do you see different about this team this year, Kenna? I think a big thing is a team chemistry, for one, and I just think the attitude of the girls. I think in the past we kind of had a fearful attitude in some of our games, but I think looking at all the players, it's like we're not going to take anything from anyone and we are completely ready to go out there and do whatever it takes to win the game. All right. That's what I want to hear. Lauren, you're, you're coming back. You had, uh, and if you've never gone through this, been an athlete and had to go through this where you have an injury, it costs you a season, and you've got to spend time going through well, surgery and then rehab and doing all that kind of stuff. Tell me a little bit about that. What, uh, did it make you appreciate the game more, being able to play? Oh, absolutely. You know, you, you get that joy and love for the game back right away, and you get to see the game from a different perspective, and you take on a different role in the team, which can be difficult at, at first, but, you know, everything happens for a reason, and I'm glad that I'm still making that comeback journey today. Did you learn anything just by, you know, I mean, you're, you're, all you can do is watch. Right. Uh, did you learn anything through that process about either yourself or, or the game itself? Yeah, I think you learn to take on a different perspective and be more accepting of giving yourself grace in certain ro certain roles. And from PT perspective, you learn to appreciate the little wins. And you can get so caught up and consumed when you're playing soccer. But it's like, now that I'm back to playing soccer again, it's just like, I'm so grateful to be here and to have this time on the field and not be back in the PT room. <laughs> well, and you we were talking, uh, this is, I think, first week of practice. We were out there in the morning practice, and I was just visiting with you a little bit while you were over there running. And you talked about you felt as strong as you ever have, right, in terms of, in terms of your, your knee, right? Yeah, definitely. You become so strong, and you learn all these different aspects that you didn't know about yourself while doing PT. And Yes, it takes time, and I'm still learning that, to come back fully when it comes to soccer. But in terms of strength and knowing you can do something, that just shoots through the roof when you come back. I have to tell you guys a funny story about, about Kenna. So um, we have the Merritt Mathias rule, uh, or I do, uh, that I instituted here back when, when Merritt Mathias played here. Qu quick, very funny story, and then how it applies to Kenna. So very first game of the year, Merritt, on the day of the game, decides that she is going to become a brunette. She had already always been a blonde. And she's playing uh, in the midfield on the other side of the field. And as soon as the game starts, I look over there and I'm, I see this 
I don't see jersey numbers. I see hairstyle and body shape and running style and where they are. That's, that's what I see, and that's who I know who it is. Well, we got a, we've got a brunette over there playing on the other side of the field, and I don't know who she is. I have no idea who she is. So I instituted a rule at that point. When you start the season with one particular hair, care, uh, hair color, you are committed, okay? You cannot change. And so Kenna, who's been kind of a blonde, a light blonde uh, hair for the first however many years, uh, you know, ever since I've known four, you. Four years. Four it's years. And year. now she has changed. And so we were just talking a while ago. I said, you're committed now. And she goes, I know, I know. I'm not going to change. <laughs> I promise. I that's, that's the thing that you have to deal with with female athletes, as for me, as a, as a play-by-play guy that, you know, you might not often think about. But uh, it's, it's a real issue. And so we had to institute the Merritt Mathias rule. So, uh, and Ke- but Kenna was, was right up there to agree to it. So, Kenna, you're coming into your fifth season. How have you changed as a player during that period of time? Well, from freshman year to fifth yeah, year? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just can't even begin to describe the different ways I've changed. Just I feel like a completely different player from when I got here freshman year, and um, I, that's really all because of Coach G and how he's changed me over the years. And from every game, every practice, I feel like I've learned more, gotten stronger, and just learned so much about the game of soccer, about how people play on the field, about how other teams play, and about myself. It's, I just can't believe how much I've changed from freshman year. I mean, because you, for you, all goalkeepers, uh, you're going to be called on. You don't know when, but most of the time it's going to be, it's just going to be you on an island, and you're going to have to make a play. And, you know, you may only get, you may only face that one or two really difficult shots, but if you, if you give that goal up, it can cost you a win. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with the mental side of that and the pressure of that position? I think going into it, Um, leading up to the game I always visualize all the different scenarios that could happen to the game and then making the save and doing the plays correctly so when it comes down to it on the field I'm like I've seen this before I have what it takes and I can go out and execute it and then from a pressure standpoint dealing from wins and losses it just you have to take everything as a learning experience you just can't get hard on yourself and it's a long season and things are going to happen your defender could, who knows, or you never know what's going to happen, and you just have to take it as a learning experience, and you just have to prepare for the next game. You just can't stay in your mental head. So, G, I wanted to, I've always wanted to ask you this. I don't think I ever have. I mean, you're an uh, incredible goalkeeper during your college career at Tulsa and then professionally after that. Um, <laughs> Are you harder on goalkeepers on than any other player, you think, because that was the position that you played? Uh, I mean, and, and I mean, seriously, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I've had baseball coaches who played, you know, they were a pitcher, and so they were harder on the pitchers than they were anybody else because that's what they knew, you know, that's, that was where they came from in the game. Uh, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. I, the girls are not in their head, yes, so maybe, I, maybe <laughs> so. so uh, <laughs> At least Kenna was. But I think, I think that because, you know, your eye is, your eye is trained yeah, for seeing that. Yeah, I would think so. And, you know, and, and unfortunately, you know, like I said, they're, they're, they're part of big moments. And so, sure. you know, it's just, it's just the, the situation becomes like when it comes to you. And, th- and that's one of the parts of, you know, if you're the goalkeeper for Texas A&M, you really only have to make – a few saves a game you just have to make those saves and so it's you know it is it is a it is a you know it's feast or famine you know right. you are you're often time in in a famine situation but you better you better eat when it's time and uh <laughs> and you better and you better make sure that that everything else is around and so a lot of what kenna has has really grown with is just understanding the nuances of all the build-up and all the all the preparation work that goes into not making saves and all the all the leadership parts of what the position is about and and if she does all if she sets the table properly with the way that she moves all of her chess pieces in front of her and has a, her defense set up and reads situations well then she doesn't really have to make that many saves because she has you know she has great players and great athletes in front of her and so she can pretty much you know, put out most of those fires before they come about. And then when it's time to, for her to put the fire out, then it becomes a little bit more predictable. But, you know, 
the game happens very fast. There's bad bounces. There, there's weather. There's there's wind. There's all kinds of things that happen, and it's a very unpredictable game. So, um, but you know, with her with her experiences, with her with her athleticism, and with her ability to play with her feet, she's become more than just a defensive player. You know, she's become an attacking weapon for us too. You Absolutely. Know, one of the neat things of you know social media the past spring that you know kind of went viral in a lot of ways is her scoring goals. You know, which is kind of a, a fun part of of the game as well. You see, you don't see a goalkeeper scoring often, but you, you'll see that with Canada. Certainly fun from my perspective. I can tell you that. <laughs> LG, I wanted to talk to you about just uh, Coach G mentioned about uh, the academic side of things a while ago. Uh, what do you? What's your plan? Uh, after your academic career here at Texas A&M is over. Yes, yeah, so I would love to continue to play soccer as long as possible, but and that includes pro, but my ultimate goal is to go to medical school. But, you know, you say you can always go to school, you can't always play soccer, um, but I definitely want to hopefully work in pediatrics or orthopedics. Oh, super. Yes. So you might be treating some future soccer players at, at yeah. some point in your life. Yes. Kenna, what about you? Um, so I definitely am wanting to go to the professional route after I finish playing. And then after that, um, I'm thinking of maybe going into sports broadcasting or trying to get a job with ESPN or going down that route. I want to stay in the sports field for sure. Outstanding. Outstanding. Well, you guys, during your careers at Texas A&M, have brought us a lot of exciting moments. I can't wait to see what's going to unfold this year because I know – there are great things ahead uh, for both of you guys, both on and off the field. And we appreciate you taking time to come by and talk to us tonight. Thanks for having us on. Thank you so Kenna much. Kenna Caldwell down there, Lauren Gessick right here. Uh, and we're going to take another quick break, and we'll be right back here at Rudy's Barbecue on Harvey Road Woo! right after this. on Harvey Road. It's the Aggie Soccer Hour with Texas A&M head coach G. Guerreri. I'm David Ellis and by popular demand we have held over Kenna Caldwell and Lauren Gessick uh, a little bit into this uh, into this segment because you know we put cards and pencils out there if you want to ask the players questions and Kevin wrote a couple of questions down and I didn't think about them until during the break so I asked the girls if they could stand uh, hang around and so I could ask these questions so if you have any last minute questions you can uh, write them down and get them up here and we'll ask them as well but so for Lauren what does the first day of practice fitness test consist of and uh, what did you think of it so this year the team did a yo-yo style beep test and they run a 21 meter um, back and forth and they have to get to the halfway line by a certain point but the most important part is getting there and back by the beep. So the beep signal, if you miss the beep, then you're out. And we had team standards this year that we had to achieve, and many people achieved it, which was great. Um, and then if you didn't achieve it, there was additional fitness, but Ashley, our strength coach, has done a great job of making sure the team is fit and ready to go. So don't the periods get kind of shorter as you progress along? I mean, the, the, the amount of time that you can take, that period gets shorter? Yes, that's correct. So you start off basically at a very slow jog, but that quickly ends and it gets faster and faster as the beeps continue and you're trying to go for a certain amount of shuttles. So it does get very difficult and you run till you can't anymore. And, and, you, and you have like, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 seconds to recover between them? What, uh, what, it's a shorter period of time. Yes, yeah, so this version of the beep test gives you 10 seconds in between when you end and when you go again. I mean, I know I was getting winded just watching. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, I mean, it was – and it was early in the morning, I don't know, 7 o'clock, something like that. It's humid. It's Texas. It's Texas. It's – and it's nasty. And these girls – I mean, you guys killed it. Yes. I mean, <laughs> you really did. Who, uh, who was the overall – uh, champion of the fitness test. Taylor Pounds was, and I was. I was. Come, I'm still coming back from injury, and I was her scorekeeper, so I didn't run it, but I got to cheer her on as she was doing it, and just she was crushing. It. I was just marking off all of her tallies, and she just kept going and going. Well, she did, and I mean, and she's, and she's another player coming back from injury. So you know, yeah. we, we she went down. Um, you know, about two thirds of the way through the season last year, when she went down, that was a that was a big blow for us. So yes. having her back, and then obviously having her back at record fitness is uh, 
a pretty big plus for us this season. Well, and I'm, I'm telling you, it was – it's not something that I would want to – want to have to do in the morning or any time for that matter. Kenna, for you, uh, can you tell us, you know, what factors you considered when, uh, you know, when you were deciding about whether to come back for a fifth season? Um, honestly, it didn't take much for me to even consider, like, reasons why I wouldn't want to come back. The main things was just the – I don't know. It really was just I would want to be here and I, I don't want to leave. If I – Three more years here, I would stay. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> the eight-year plan. Yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> I understand that. I mean, th- one of the reasons for me, at any rate, would be that because the other alternative, I'm going to go get a job. Eight. So, you know, uh, as opposed to to, uh, to uh, playing soccer. We are glad uh, you did, uh, for sure, because uh, that, that leadership, that experience from both of you guys is going to, uh, you know, mean so much uh, to this team. All right, now I promise – you can, you can really go. And, again, thank you guys very, very much for coming by to the Aggie Soccer Hour. Thanks so thank much. Thank you. Okay, Coach G, I had a question for you as well uh, that we can get to real quick if you want to. I'm not going to run the beep test if that's, no, the, <laughs> if that's the question. I'm not. <laughs> no, you are not. Uh, regarding uh, opening with uh, – Florida State University and, and Washington State University. Mm-hmm. Uh, you doing that because what North Carolina and UCLA weren't available? <laughs> or, uh, or well, you know, this is the uh, we the, talked a little bit about this already. The um, the Florida State game is a return match from uh, 2021. Um, we opened the season there in uh, you know at, at their place, and that was a that was a match actually that that we lost in the last minute of regulation. Yes. Um, one nothing, uh, you know, kind of a heartbreaking loss of, you know, a great win for them. It was a tough loss for us, uh, one nothing, And uh, we, we, they didn't come back to us last year. There was some sort of, uh, th- they had some sort of an issue that they weren't able to, to, to return the game last year. So we pushed it to this year. And typically, um, typically we go on the road, we've, we've gone on the road the opening weekend of the season and it just kind of worked out that this was a this was going to be a year that we that we stayed home uh, because usually the students aren't aren't here uh, right. But because it's move-in weekend, um, we went ahead and, and decided to stay and uh, and open because the students were going to be here. Another question was uh, any rule changes for this year that uh, fans need to be aware of? Can you think of it? I don't. I'm no, not. it's not. Uh, NCAA rules change every two years. Uh, or that's when they can change rules is every two years. So we're still um, living through last year's changes, which are uh, no overtime in the regular season. Um, and the, the main rules that they, that they keep coming up with that, are, that the referees are, are worried about is, um, you know, is mostly about the men's game, which is about fights, which we've had. You know, we had a fight like 20 years ago um, on the women's side in for Texas A&M. Now, uh, LSU and and uh, Ole Miss had a pretty good fight last year in the SEC tournament, but that was those yes, that was did. those guys, wasn't our guys. And uh, and then they're concerned about bench decorum. So that's the referees with big ears. So <laughs> that's it. Yeah, I knew I knew I could. I, that I could get you, you know. I wasn't going to say, that's I'm just, not, that's I'm not, not I'm me, not that's to, us, that's just, you know. I'm not trying to get you wound up, I'm just, just We say We sit calmly and. Uh, yes, of course, I know that, and, and I, I certainly know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about, you know, in a regular season, uh, no overtime. Um, after a year of doing this, are you, Pro or con on that? You like it? You don't like it? What do you th- What do you think? I think it's. I think that I, I'm not. A, I'm not for it because I think it's. Uh, it's too. It's too hard on the NCAA committee that has to choose the NCAA tournament. Um, there were there were significantly more ties last year uh, because of it. Right. Um, I think also that American sports fans don't prefer ties as much as they prefer having the opportunity to have a win. I think a golden goal makes a game much more exciting for, for the fans. And it just, you know, it makes it to where, you know, it just brings that much more excitement to a game. And, you know, we're, we have, a, we have, we have re-entries in games and we have substitutions and, 
Yeah, I know it adds a little bit more time, but you know, the, the overtimes are only 10 minutes, and so I uh, I know that p people are, are saying well, it adds you know it's 20 more minutes potentially in a game, and and I and I realize that that's we we want to try to to limit you know if we can uh, some of the, the physical factors on it, but I I, I just I, I think there's other ways to there's other ways to uh, accomplish those goals, but you know, getting a winner in the game is is a pretty important factor. Yeah, it was it was it was weird a couple of times last year where you know you're so used to going to overtime and you get to the end of the game and it's a, and it's a and it's a a, a draw and you just kind of well, I, I think it, it's it, kind of it's a ta it becomes a tactical a tactical ploy sure. for you know teams that are you know. Hey, are we are we going to go for the win today? Are we, you know, it, it becomes you know, uh, you know, the Alamo. Are we going to? It's an Alamo with a time limit. After, <laughs> you know, after 90 minutes, all, all the Mexican troops go home, and you and you survive. Those 13 Texans survived. It right. didn't work out that way, you know, right. a long time right. ago. It, it, you you basically you you can't you can't survive that way in a lot of in a lot of games when you have to go to overtimes because the 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 superior team is going to win. And, uh, you know, so sometimes, you know, it, so then when the NCAA tournament, when the NCAA tournament committee is trying to determine what's a good tie and what's a bad tie, a tie is a tie. And right. so it's, it's hard to, uh, it's hard, to, it's hard to quantify sometimes. Yeah, I'm with you on that. That's for sure. And it makes for a lot of biting of fingernails uh, as you get into tournament selection day. All right, we have st we've still got a lot of stuff to talk about. I want to talk about the World Cup. I want to talk about the schedule that uh, you guys have put together. Mm -hmm. I mean, a great schedule coming up this season, both non-conference and conference. Uh, and then uh, uh, talk about those kind of things. And then also, right out of the bat, there are some interesting matchups this coming weekend in the SEC. And we're going to get to all of that. Uh, before we get out of here, but we're going to take our last break. You're listening to the Aggie Soccer Hour from uh, Rudy's Barbecue on Harvey Road. All righty, we are back here at Rudy's Barbecue on Harvey Road, the sprint to the finish. For the, uh, what is it, the 156th? or seventh edition of the Aggie Soccer Hour. Can wow. You, can you believe that they have been letting us do this uh, for this long? We, well, we've been very lucky. We we closed down a couple places. But yeah, this we did. Is the Rudy yeah, is staple. Truth, truth be known. Thank God. Yes, thankfully for uh, – thank Pete goodness for the guys. Thank you. For Rudy's Barbecue and Brian Broadcasting and, uh, and uh, 12th Man Productions, uh, we, still, uh, we still get to do this. A couple of uh, SEC teams uh, opened the schedule in grand fashion. There, you've got South Carolina at Clemson on Thursday night. That ought to be uh, there's a little bit of a rivalry there between South Carolina and Clemson. <laughs> yeah, you know, and they go back they go back and forth on, and those those are usually because the because their name their their name rivals. There's a big crowds um, at at either venue, whether it's at in Columbia or in in Clemson, those are those will be good games. And South Carolina, you know, is uh, is is one of one of the one of the preseason favorites in the league. And, uh, you know, I would I would pick them as a, a team that, that could knock off Clemson in Clemson this weekend. Georgia uh, ambitious from the from the get go. They go out to the left coast and they take on number one UCLA on Thursday and then go across town and take on uh, number 22 USC on Sunday. Well, pretty interesting too because uh, Georgia with a you know has a good recruiting class as far as freshmen but also some really key transfers and a few of them are from USC. Right. So interesting that they're going to go back and and uh, play against the Trojans in, or the Lady Trojans in uh, in Los Angeles. Ahmad Brown our former assistant coach also on the staff now at USC. And, uh, but enough about other people's schedule. I want to talk about uh, the Aggies' schedule. In addition to Florida State and Washington State, at home uh, on the 26th, Saturday night, uh, Baylor. And that is uh, uh, fish camp, the Fish Camp game. And then your alma mater, uh, and a lot Tulsa. Of, a lot of people in town for, th for that particular weekend. Big youth tournament, but 130 youth teams coming into town. So uh, make your reservations at restaurants that particular night. It'll yeah. be crowded. Yeah. And then uh, – yeah, Tulsa coming to town on 31st. the 31st. On the 31st, which we're excited about. And then uh, we, we're going to play uh, Grambling here uh, 
as well as, and then we're going to go on the road to TCU and Rice for two uh, two foes that uh, have seen a lot of each other of late. And that those both of those road games are within drivable distance. So uh, I would uh, imagine that we'll we we should see a lot of uh, a lot of Aggie fans at those games. I hope that we'll see a lot of Aggie fans at those games. And you know, for for us, those are those are two tough venues for us to play in um, yes we had a good result against tcu this spring you know went up and and uh and got had a good had a good set sunday afternoon match against them um you know and you know rice rice has been has had a, a good run as of late so we know that that's going to be a uh, that's gonna be a tough match as well and listen to these conference games that the aggies uh, have at home this year against kentucky arkansas ole miss alabama and South Carolina. I mean, those are some great, great home conference games. And uh, it ought to be exciting at Ellis Field, and you're not going to want to miss those for sure. You know, the game, on, the game on Thursday is on the SEC network, though we need people in the, in the venue. You can, always, uh, you can always go back and watch that game on, the, uh, on, your, your, uh, on your Apple TV later on or, right. re- or record it on your DVR. But uh, it'll be neat to uh, if we can get a big crowd on Thursday night to uh, to show what the atmosphere really is like with the 12th man in the house uh, for you know for a national television broadcast for for the Florida State game. But you know we're excited about having national TV here, but we really need people in the venue to help us out in that particular one. Absolutely, and then you make a huge huge difference at Ellis Field. World Cup been going on for the last few weeks. And it's been, uh, it's been, a, it's, you know what? It's been a great, great event. I've been, I've been so impressed with the play. Yeah. I've been so impressed with the quote minnows of of the world powers. The you know so many of the quote big fish are have been knocked out early, including us. But you know just on how how far the game has come with so many different countries and. In all corners of the globe, it's it's really been fun to watch. And my my wife has gotten so wrapped up into this. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is just absolutely amazing. And and by the way, sweetheart, I'm getting ready to talk are, about. Are you the, calling me, sweetheart? No, no. Okay. I'm just talking to my wife, who may be listening. And I'm getting ready to talk about the Spain Sweden game. And I know she hasn't watched it yet because it's she's not going to get to watch it tonight. So, you know, don't pay any attention to me as you normally do. And and uh, and uh, so you uh, otherwise. Uh, Spain beat Sweden two to one to move into the finals on two late goals. Mm-hmm. I mean that's. Uh, but you know, and Sweden was my pick after they beat the USA, and just I just I thought they would do it, but well, obviously. But it it just goes to show what technical ability does for the game and how yeah. how technically clean the the Spaniards are. The Japanese were were fantastic, and just how how far so many of these teams have come and what what a football culture does for finally allowing women to get into the game yes. and and what it's done for allowing these women to be you know to be empowered to play to play to play the world's game it's 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 so refreshing to see it's been so wonderful to see what's going on with this and you know now and there's an old goalkeeper talking the for me one of the greatest things that has happened in this, to the, one of the biggest improvements in this has been the goalkeeping. There's been a lot of what I would, this will sound bad, there's been a lot of what over the years have been what we refer to as just bad, just, you know, what they call girl goals, just a floating ball above the shoulders that just was misjudged. Right. Um, and that has not happened. No. I mean, these women are dominating the six yard box they're dominating the penalty area crosses are coming in and these goalkeepers have been absolutely fantastic there's no such thing as as as, as there's been only a handful of of quote bad goals that happen at all professional levels on on both genders and it is what is has happened is it has made the game so attractive and it's made it to where to score you have to earn the goals and just look at when we played against sweden I mean, right. the Swedish goalkeeper played out of her mind and knocked us out. It's yes. pure, pure and simple. I mean, it just was – it was really, really fun to watch across what about, the board. What about Australia and England? I mean, is that place going to be rocking or what? I you mean, know, and, and, you know, if, if Australia goes through 
to the final. They play now. They play tonight, tomorrow morning. However you want to phrase that. Um, I think five thirty. Five thirty tomorrow morning. Right. By uh, by official accounts. But if Australia does go through to the final. I mean, what will that be like as oh, far as gonna as, be as far as a national holiday? And this is, you know, th- it's not their national sport. It's not their most popular sport, right. but it is transforming a lot in that country. the The way that the the, the way that the nation is is coming around to the game. It's it's been it's been absolutely wonderful to see, and I'm so so proud to be a part of what what the game is 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 doing around the world. All righty, I want to remind you one more time before we get out of here. Thursday night, it all gets started at 7 o'clock against Florida State at Ellis Field. Uh, get out there to Ellis Field and watch uh, your Aggie soccer team. If you can't make it, you can get it on the SEC Network, 97.3 FM, 12th Man Mobile App, or Radio Aggie Land. And then 6 o'clock on Sunday night against Washington State. Uh, again, uh, that is uh, 6 o'clock on Sunday night, 97.3, 12th Man Mobile App, RadioAggieLand.com. Got all kind of great promotions going on. So get there early, be loud, have fun, and support this Aggie soccer team. You're not, again, you're just not going to want to miss it. I want to remind you that this copyrighted broadcast is exclusive presentation of Learfield IMG College under broadcasting rights granted by Texas A&M University. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the express written consent of Texas A&M University and Learfield IMG College. Announcers are provided by Learfield IMG College and Texas A&M University and for G. Guerreri and Kevin Munchow, who kept us between the ditches tonight. That is no easy task. I'm David Ellis. Thanks for listening, everybody. Good night. <laughs>